what do you make of these uh, of these plans, for example, to settle Mars? I've got the Mars One website here open on my computer. It says human settlement on Mars. Mars One will establish a permanent human settlement on Mars. Crews of four will depart every two years starting in 2024. Our first unmanned mission will be launched in 2018. Participate in this mission to Mars through our crowdfunding campaign. Feasible? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I guess. But when I remind all these guys, and I say guys, these people, do you know, uh, where are you right now? Sorry, let's start with that. I'm, I'm located in New York City. In New York. It's going to be uh, minus 15 Celsius, 6 Fahrenheit, something like that. Something like that. It's pretty cold out, yeah. It's going to be cold. Here, I'm in California, even though it's a little overcast today, it's going to be mm, 75 Fahrenheit, 23, 25 Celsius, okay? Do you know the state motto of California? I don't. It's Eureka. I found it. I mention this only by way of example. California is not for everybody, but these guys came over the hill. These European settlers or pioneers came over the hill and there's oranges growing like weeds. There's salmon coming up the Sacramento River, jumping in your lap. There is the rocks are literally made of gold. The gold, the, the, the San Francisco 49ers, the 1849ers are gonna be in the Super Bowl. So that's why people came to California to experience, to take advantage of this extraordinary agricultural opportunity. So much food is grown in the San Joaquin Valley. We have these enormous water projects to bring fresh water from the north of California to the center, to the Inland Empire and Southern California. Well, on Mars, there's no water. Okay, there's nothing to breathe, let alone eat. So, I mean, I'm all for these guys, these people who want to be the pioneers and go to Mars and do these extraordinary things and live these extraordinary lifestyles and have their babies born on Mars and rough pioneering spirit, yes, but there are not the resources that that many of us take for granted when we go to new wilderness places on the earth. Mm. And so I'm all for it. I want to explore Mars with people. I want people to go up there with rock hammers and hand lenses and microscopes and biologically biological culturing laboratories and figure out if there's anything alive there or was something alive there. I'm all for that. But the claim that you're going to go to Mars and be the pioneers and live off the land is an extraordinary one. One of our viewers uh, is commenting online. Eric Ashley says, do you believe in life on other planets? Do you think those life forms look like us? Uh, I don't see... I, yes, absolutely, I believe there, are, there is life on other planets. I just don't see how there could not be. This gets, gets into this old sentence. Uh, it would be a tremendous waste of space. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but that they would look like us, I just don't see how that's possible. I mean, the, the number of, of tiny things that have happened to bring us where we are today, I just don't see how that could possibly be automatically replicated. With that said, or, or uh, probabilistically replicated, with that said, uh, I'm a big fan of the original Star Trek, where we had the we had several remarkable examples of Hodgkin's laws of parallel planetary development, <laughs> which was a science fiction conceit that allowed you to use wardrobe department clothes and stuff.